Coming to you from Crash Studios in Music City, USA, Nashville. This is the Rich Redman Show. On this episode, body language and sales expert, Coach Bill Maddox. And now, Rich Redman. everyone, Rich Redman here. This is another exciting episode of the Rich Redman Show coming to you live from Craft Studio, Brentwood, Tennessee. As always, I have my friend Jim McCarthy. How yeah. are you doing, bud? Good, how are you? Hey, you know, no man is an island and this is impossible to do without a person like you, Thank a you. spirit whisperer, I a agree. muse. You pr- you produce this show, you co-host, your voice sounds like candy on the radio. I just want to thank you publicly. Candy on the radio. I was wondering if I could get a pillow made out of your voice oh to my sleep gosh. on. Oh my gosh. Now you guys may be wondering who this good looking um, man is next to me. This is my fr- new friend, Bill Maddox. He's absolutely. a business professional performance coach. Absolutely. Business professional performance coach. Business professional performance. Yeah, I had to practice that. It's, it's you a tongue You can make me twister. do my introduction from hey, now on. Hey, I'll yeah. do it. And Jim does that as well. And he's, he's analyzing us right now. Yeah. Little oh, bit. Yeah. oh no, good, 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 good. Now, analyze this. Good movie, right? Yeah, good movie. <laughs> so tell us about <clears throat> your, your skill set, what lane, you've done a lot of things, but what you're doing with your life right now, I know you're coaching people, but you also have some really cool specialties that are almost scientific. Yeah, so um, so I'm coaching a lot of uh, executives right now, so a number of companies, but, but really it's kind of grown into um, just really top performers, guys running $60 million companies. Wow. And, I mean, just big, big players in all different industries, which is pretty fascinating. So you got deep sea technology to um, mega developers uh, to incredible financial investors yeah. that are just rocking it. Um, so yeah, so I'm coaching them, also coaching a number of other companies, do a lot of speaking, different things like that. But one of my skill sets that, that has been um, that's been really helpful is my study of neurolinguistic programming. Okay. NLP, I don't know if you know how much you know about sure, that. Sure, yeah. Okay. You know, and, and a knowledge of this can help anyone in any season of their life oh, in any career track. It's incredible. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so neurolinguistic programming is uh, neuro, it's the brain, it's the brain association. So we, we all make decisions based on a, a mental syntax, something that has to be satisfied mm-hmm. in order for us to go, oh, I want to do this. Yeah, I'd like to do this. Right. right? Mm-hmm. So when you can elicit that information by asking questions, the quality of the, and Tony Robbins says this all the time, the quality of the questions you ask will determine the quality of the answers you get. Sure. The challenge is most of us don't ask really good questions. Right. We ask very basic questions. We get very basic answers. How you doing? Even of ourselves. Yeah, how you doing? How you doing, huh? Hey, how you doing? How you I doing? don't really care how you doing. That's a salutation, like, hello. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. But when you learn when you learn how to extract information from another person, then you can satisfy that mental syntax, and you can create and establish rapport very quickly. The Rich Redmond Show will be right back. Learn by doing, I definitely think, resonates with what we're about here at the School of Rock. I'm Angie McCright, and I'm the owner of the School of Rock in Franklin and Nashville. I would say that the majority of kids that come in have either been sitting in their bedrooms watching YouTube, learning how to play, or they've taken music lessons at some point in their life. We do have a lot of beginners. It doesn't matter what level you're at. You can participate in our programs, whether you're a beginner or you're advanced. We don't teach music to put on shows. We put on shows to teach music. Connect with School of Rock today. Search School of Rock Franklin or Nashville. This is the Rich Redman Show. I'm really curious because it seems like this can make you, if you're already kind of like um, somewhat uh, outgoing and charismatic, you could take this to a whole other level. You really can. <laughs> That's very is exciting. <laughs> and they do. And they do. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, do you, is this, uh, this has been a passion pursuit for you? Uh, or is there a, uh, are you accredited in this? How does this work? Yeah. So you, I'm accredited. Um, so is it a passion? Yes. I started uh, following Richard Grander and John Bindler um, back in the early 80s. Tony 
Robbins came in, I think, in 85. I love Tony, yeah. Yeah, Tony, great guy. Uh, wrote Unlimited Power. I subscribed to uh, Tony's research, uh, Robbins' research, and uh, trained with them. Um, so a long time, a lot of my life. And it, the, the beautiful thing is it just continues to grow, it continues to develop. Sure. There's so many different areas that you can take neurolinguistics into. So I teach uh, um, NLP negotiations. How do you negotiate with someone? Yeah. And you're, you're really, you're extracting their information and they, they're they not even aware. Do you think you could um, keep someone from uh, jumping off a 20-story building? Sure, I could. Yeah. Yeah, I'd grab them by their hair. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look over there, over where. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like the movie, you get a guitar and you just sing, you know, yeah. sing them back in off the I think the it was leg. Samuel L. Jackson in The Negotiator, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wasn't That's it? right. I'm, yeah. I'm trying to think uh, who was in that movie. We'll figure it out. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Anyway, so cool technologies. Um, what's, and what's the starter kit? What would be the first book someone would read on the subject? Is it yours or your No, your you know, um, I am in the process of writing a book right now. Uh, it's called Lunches for Amateurs. Yeah. So just a belief system that I have. Yeah. Um, also, no lunch for you. No lunch. No. It's, it's a huge. First of all, so Eat at here's, your desk. My, here's, my, here's my belief on that. Yeah. Um, I don't want to compete with anyone. I don't want to compete with a salad bar. Right. I don't want to compete with a waitress or a waiter. I don't want to compete with kids. If I'm going to have, a, if I'm going to take someone to lunch, I want their full attention. That's hard to do. It's very hard to do. That's yeah. why I don't do it. So, and huh. it, when people ask me to go to lunch, it makes me think something very quickly. It makes me think, how much time do they have on their hands? I don't have, and I don't have. I just came from four hours of coaching. Right. I've got three. I've got two clients after this when we're done today. Right. So I don't have uh, an hour to burn. So what do you like a protein bar guy? You're just boom. You got it. Well, so. you know, you you grab on the way. I mean, yeah. you not fast food, but you grab on the way. You do things, yeah. you know. But it's just I don't have an hour to waste or an yeah. hour and a half to waste. And I understand some people. Um, Maybe their industry dictates that you take lunches for meetings and things of that nature. Yeah. But ideally, I want to work with people that have very little time to spare. Yeah. You know, because they're doing things. They're moving and shaking the world. On the go. Yeah. Now, I'll go to dinner. I'll go to dinner, but we're going to go as friends. Yeah. You know, we're going to build, establish, create rapport during that time. We're going to decide whether we want to do business together. So if you're going to do a power meeting, it's there, like it's not going to be at a public forum with food. It's and, not. Gotcha. No. No, and, uh, and I have a concept that I call uh, interest strategy, exit strategy. So every meeting I do, I have an interest strategy and an exit strategy. It's very hard to dictate that through a restaurant. Yeah. It's, it's just very challenging. Well, I did a, I did a, I did a, a power lunch yesterday. It was a two-hour lunch. I met a, 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 a potential new speaking manager, bureau okay, owner sure. over at Brick Tops. And it, it was a two-hour lunch, and we were interrupted six times maybe yeah. you know and, and you just you just got to get back on track and the poor waiter i think i tell everybody that they should wait tables at one point during their life just to understand how difficult it is because when someone's at a power lunch and both people are talking the entire time it's really hard to get in there and go guys ready yeah uh, can i get you anything See, it's, and it's if tough you're in the, and here's the challenge too if you're trying to put something really um difficult technical together or yeah. something financially large yeah. um that that inconsistency it'll yeah, kill the deal yeah, where were we yeah, yeah 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 it'll kill the deal so i don't i don't want to i don't want any distractions i don't want to have to compete with anything that's just a philosophy i have interesting but yeah so this is something simple but um so back to nlp so where do you start you know great place to start you can you can get online you can google nlp nlp programming neuro linguistic programming uh neuro associative conditioning yeah. um and there's all kinds of people that are teaching that are you know also accredited and they're teaching it. I don't have a course on it I, inside my executive coaching program. I do teach neurolinguistics how to extract information, how to extract the right information, how to make the right hire. How do you? Because we all go into hire, right? We all go into get a job to apply for a job, and we we are very well rehearsed. Mm -hmm. This is what we're good at. That's right? the veneer. That's it. That's the veneer. So how do you if you're hiring if you're hiring executives or if you're hiring anyone? How do you move? How do you get past that veneer? How do you get past that that practiced part? Right. And extract the the kind of questions that tell you whether this person has loyalty, honesty, integrity, own, can take ownership because that's what you want. If you want to grow and expand and scale your company, you need people who take ownership. Yeah. So how do you do that? And that's that's one of the things. Where, that's where NLP comes in. It's very powerful because you want to work with people that you know, like, and trust, and you have to be able to uh, yeah, yeah. The trust right. right. Yeah. Yeah. 
So I mean, what? and a lot of what you're doing is like I'm 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 looking at your hands. I'm looking at your hands. Sure. And, what's and of this? course, I'm, like, I'm what's a, this? So that's that's what? a simple. What's a power? That's a, just a power play. So here here's what we see. You know, you see this. You see this all the time. Everybody uses it. I I do it more just because God. So that's what I I'm so trained putting to putting your it. fingertips together. Putting your fingers yeah. together, creating a, a temple. Mm-hmm. And who do we see do this? Hosts, television hosts. We do that, but we also see doctors, politicians, educators. We see people of high influence and knowledge. So just as an association, if you want to, if you want to appear to be more knowledgeable, just simply temple every once in a while. Interesting. Yeah. There are a lot of people so that women, do it too so, much. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. you can do it too much. And women, women have a tendency to temple too low. So if the women who are listening, Ray, if you want a temple and, and it templing, looks like a birth canal. What? <laughs> is, that, is there something there? I don't know. No. It's nothing there. Okay. <laughs> but if you if you want to bring a point across, if you really want someone to to lock onto something you're saying, that's when you want a temple. That's now, a great this? place. Yeah. What's this? So that's a praying. That's I would never do that in never. a never. In a lunch. I would never do it anywhere. Ever. Unless if I were going to pray or something. Because, you know, I'm studying, mm-hmm. like, I'm studying like, you know, TV hosting. I'm studying with a girl yeah. in Los Angeles. And she's like, okay, there's a couple moves for you, Ritz. There's this. There is See, that's that, consoling. And that's and prayer. Then, and then there's that. That's templing. That's the power. She goes, those are the three things that usually we, we choose from. <laughs> well, that's okay. That's, uh, I'm praying. I'm going to shoot you, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So or I'm praying basically. you don't shoot me. I don't know. So oh, if you're listening to this, we're talking about folding your fingers together is like praying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Rich putting his hands over each other. Thumb to thumb. That's, that's kind of consoling. Yeah. Yep. And then <clears throat> I, I, I put my hand, I folded my fingers and pointed my, I've got my, my index finger and my thumb together. Mm-hmm. So that's that's the uh, praying shooting thing that we're talking about. <laughs> or praying maybe I'm you praying you me. don't shoot right, me. That's right. what it is. And yeah. then and then you know I remember uh, being a you know uh, you know I was a band nerd. You know I you know I got my my master's degree in music education. So like I was I wore a lot of tuxedos and stood in the back of a lot of orchestras. Yeah, sure. And they always said you know sometimes you're waiting four hundred measures four hundred and one. Ding! You play the triangle. So while you're waiting, it's just you're, you maybe fold your arms lower. But this is not yeah. wel- welcoming where yeah. you're in the back. So let me say something about crossing so what, your arms. What you just did was cross your arms, right? And a lot of people think that is, man, I am turned off. I don't want to hear anything. Closed I'm shut. Down. I'm closed off. I'm shut down. Gotcha. Not necessarily. So you have to set a baseline with everyone. This is what's really important. So you can read a lot of things about body language, things, things like that online, yeah. but you have to read. You have to set a baseline to be able to read them correctly. Some people are honestly just very comfortable crossing their hands right. or yeah. crossing their arms. It doesn't mean they're closed off. It doesn't mean they're closed off at all. Yeah, I'm comfortable with my hand in front of my mouth like this. People might take it as being li- a liar. Well, see, they would because typically, what do you? So here's it's a little body language. Um, so as you have your hand over your mouth and you're talking, mm-hmm. so we typically, we typically, when we see this in investigations, you see this in, in sales, this is a person trying to subconsciously stop themselves from talking. Mm-hmm. They put their hand over their mouth, shut mm-hmm. up, shut up, shut up, shut right. up, stop, 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 because they're about to tell a false truth. Not always, again, you, you're comfortable doing that. So mm-hmm. that's a baseline. So you have to set that. Otherwise, they just think you're lying to me all the time. Right. Yeah. Yeah. This, this is great stuff for, I would say, um, emerging actors to learn if they're going to be the person that's being interrogated on Law & Order SUV. Mm-hmm. Which I've is, always got my hand on my face for some reason. Well, you got a cool beard. You yeah. know, you got that thing going I'm on. Just, I tell you, it helps me think. You know, just do this. They're, yeah. they're, they're rubbing their scrub. See, that's consoling. So, so you, that would be... So in negotiations, yeah. this is what you're looking at. In negotiation, you see things like where you put your hand over your mouth, you're touching your ear, uh, you're going to your neck. Mm. See, these are all, or crossing your hands, or folding your hands, or rubbing your hands. Mm. Obviously, we know rubbing your hands, you're not going to do that, hopefully. But these are all little signs of stress releasers. So there's stress, I'm consoling myself. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, yeah, um, I'm. I'm about to tell you something that I'm not 100 percent sure. So what do I do? I, I rub my nose. I'm about. I'm trying to subconsciously stop myself, but I can't because I have to tell you something. Um, for example, we, we were in negotiations. This was years ago. Uh, we were in negotiations, and there was a company that we were negotiating with that had promised to bring some products from China to the United States, and in this negotiations. Right at the moment that they were confirming the amount of time that it would take to get the, that they could confirm they will absolutely have that delivery, one of the gentlemen on the other side of the team kind of put his hand over his mouth. Not a big deal, but I, I leaned over and I, I kind of whispered in the gentleman I was working with here. I said I would ask him about that. I would confirm that. So he did. He called him out on it, and here was the reality was they weren't completely sure. 
Mm. From from that little action just shows you how powerful it is. He just before he said, just we can absolutely do that. We can have that date. Ooh. But mm. it was picking that up that was so incredible. Was rubbing his nose. Well, it was he he kind of rubbed under his nose, but what he was doing, it, and it's not always the case. Again, you have to set a baseline. But what he was doing in this case was he was trying to stop himself subconsciously from saying we can absolutely perform to this contract. Right. And they couldn't. And my, my guy just called him out on it. And here's the reality. Here's the beautiful thing. It was okay. It was okay that they couldn't make this date. But could he comfortably make this date if this one fell through? Yes, absolutely. So your partner literally called him out on his body language. On his body language. To, to double check that he wasn't overpromising. That's exactly right. Wow. Yeah. Very Signaling. powerful. Very powerful. S- signaling. Right. Uh, now, Jim, yeah. Jim has been talking in the last five episodes about frame, framing arguments and posturing. Oh, yep. incredibly important. Sell or be sold. Yeah. That's what it is. So, you know, something that I, um, that I spend a lot of time on is, is pitching, uh, helping people get their pitch together. Right. And here's what we know about human nature. People want what they can't have. They move towards what moves away from them. And they only value what comes with a price. That, that come, that's very powerful in romance. It's, it's, it is powerful in everything. Yeah. Think about the uh, Jesse's Jesse's girl. Wish that I had Jesse's yeah. girl. That's all mm-hmm. right. So that actually lays out framing perfectly because Jesse wants somebody else's girl. Yeah. If he goes, my best friend's girlfriend. That's Rick right. Ocasek, so could, could there, so <laughs> he wants her. She doesn't want him. So what's he try to do? He tries to be funny. He tries to be cool with the lines. You know, impress her. Yep. She's still moving away. He's still chasing he her. Wants her more. And yeah, he wants her more. And guess what? Is there going to be a price in this? He's going to lose his, his best friendship. friend. It's going to yeah. be gone. And, so, and he's going to be put in the friend zone. <laughs> Yeah, well, wow. I don't want that. Well, he's not going to be in the friend zone with his friend anymore if he takes no. his girl. So it's just uh, just very interesting. But people want, typically, they want what they can't have. They move towards what moves away from them. And they only value what comes with the price. So if you can encapsulate this inside your pitch, inside your presentation, inside anything that you do, it will attract and draw people to you. Yeah. Is that the same thing as, as taking your product and pricing it high for perceived value? MSRP. Um, you know, it, maybe it could be. Um, so, but better than that is, hey, I don't know that this is going to work. I, I, I don't know. I don't. I don't know you well enough yet to know yeah. whether or not we're going to be able to do business together. Um, I like where we're at so far, but I never allow the negotiations to move faster than a relationship. Fair, right? Okay, I just pushed you away. Yeah, you took away the. I took product. away. Yeah. I did. Yeah. Now you don't know. You don't know whether I'm going to let you coach with me. Yeah. Right. So now you're going, well, why, why can't I coach with you? <laughs> well, I just don't know yet. I don't know that, I don't know that you're going to be fun enough. You know, I like to, I, we get intense. I like to work with people that have good senses of humor. Well, I know a lot of jokes. I have good sense of humor. See, they start working then, right? Yeah. Working for yeah, your so approval. See, so guess what's happening now? They're selling you. This is what's so brilliant. They're selling you. And you just kind of etch away a little more and they come a little closer. But it, think about it. Anytime you chase anything, what's it do? It runs. Yeah, sure. It runs, yeah. It runs. So we take it away, they move towards us. And we're back in control again. Wow. We did that in the car business all the time. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Well, I don't know if I can just meet that payment. Well, maybe we're on the wrong car. Maybe we need to yeah. go down a, a Maybe a you'd be more comfortable at our let's, $2 slot table. Let's put this uh, this car over <laughs> here, the one that you really like, <laughs> and let's get the next level down. That This this one puts you in the in where we need to be, yeah. price-wise. Yeah. Is that something that will work for you? But see, that that's legitimate, though. Yeah. That's legitimate. Maybe they can't afford that car. But ultimately, they would find a way to make to, the to other afford one. It. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, it's, it was Again, a, it was a it's, closing it's, technique. It's, that's it. Yeah. yeah. People want what they can't have. Yep. But so. even, even if you didn't know the inside track to all this, this science, you've got a big personality. You're a big guy. I think that you're going to be very um, persuasive. I love, Yeah. So I'm going to say something like bad. <laughs> so I, I went to Kroger. I just moved into my house, right? And I go to Kroger, do my shopping, and, and I leave my phone in the cart, drive away, come back 10 minutes later. Phone's gone. Oh, it's no. not in the car. Oh, yeah. Brand new. Yeah, all this. And uh, so I go inside, and I said, I said, um, <laughs> I said, anybody turn on a phone? Yeah, what's your name? Give me my phone. Mm-hmm. He goes, here. <laughs> Just like, yeah. So, yeah. yes, you can intimidate a little bit. But then I, then I had to go, Zach, listen, never do that again. Never allow another person to, allow, to force you to do something you shouldn't do. But because I, because I demanded, give me my phone. Right, because it was my phone. I knew it was my phone. I didn't see the was phone. Was it an employee I, that was, was testing employee you to say, what's your name? Yeah, what's your name? Let me check your name. Give me my phone. I don't have time. Give me my phone. Right. Yes, sir. And he gave it right to me. Right. But she, yeah. he should have never given that. But it was my, it was my authority, yeah. right? 
Are um, you playing with this stuff all the time just 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 to see if it works? What do you do when a homeless guy asks you for change? That's a great question. <laughs> oh my god. Cuz all the time I, I really feel like last night my new technique has been cuz I'm I've got a big heart, man, yeah, and I over tip I and, and and so like this guy comes up to me and he's and I'm like the my new thing is like nope. I just keep walking. Got nothing. Or sorry, brother. Yeah. Or I have no change. I have no well, cash. So here's the thing. I don't carry cash. Who yeah. carries cash? So I, I, so I have said, do you have a, you have a slide card? Yeah. I can give you a credit card. I can give you my debit card. Someone's going to call Someone's you. Someone's going to say, well, yeah. So then they're going to get it, you know, cause they're innovative enough. Yeah. But honestly, I, I just, I, you know, I wave them off, man. So here's the deal. Years ago, I ran a company. Uh, I was vice president of the uh, uh, RC Berry company. It's a well drilling company. And we, it just started that people were standing on the corner looking, you know, give me some money, give me some money. So I would go up and I'd go, hey, you guys, you want to work? We always need people on the cruise. No, I don't want to work. Yeah. So, I mean, I can't tell you how many times, oh, yeah, I'll be there. Can I start tomorrow? Yeah, you start tomorrow, pay $12 an hour. This no one is, said that ever. Well, they never, they, no one ever showed up. No one ever wanted to work. Mm. That's the reality. Now, that's not all cases. Now, there's a lot of, a lot of people are struggling out there trying to get their life back together. I get that. But the same people, when you see them for months and months, come on. Yeah. Now the guy standing at the street corner on the corner of the, the <coughs> Demon Bruin and you know forty right there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a lot of effort. He's making the sign. He's out See, there in the beating about sun. That. Twelve I think hours about, a day. I know. I think about that. Man, take that. Take that energy. Take that dedication. That determination, and put it into something. You really can't get a job. But they're making three to four hundred bucks a day. Hour. Why would they take an eight dollar an hour job to make it a couple? Of, they really are. Know, well, see, I've heard, all those, stories. I've heard yeah. all those stories, They're but I don't know. Time living. You know, there's a woman actually on Facebook. Mm. Uh, two people that, that that they made Facebook page, pages for these people. There's a woman that goes around, and I actually I ran into her at an Einstein's bagel one time. She comes up to you while you're eating. You know, and begs. She interrupts you. Oh boy! And she says, "Hey, uh, I just escaped an, an abusive relationship. I just need twenty three dollars to get a hotel. It's always an odd number." Like twenty seven dollars or twenty three dollars, and just to get a you know, to get to a hotel, and she does this over and over and over again. People are wise to her to where they actually uh, they'll get somebody. The Facebook pages become so big that they'll report where she's doing her stuff and scamming people. You know oh, what? Wow. The nerve! Yeah. Talk about the, the like. I could never do that over and over. Or the guy that says, "Hey, man, I'm so sorry to interrupt you, but uh, I'm out of gas and I'm out of money, and I just need to go see my mom. She's in the hospital." Yeah. All this inventive creativity. Yeah. Write a book. Yeah. Do see something. And, see, and I'm that guy that's given way too many times. I mean, so I'm kind of hardened to it. Yeah. But I think that you know. As human, as human creatures, we can adapt to anything. Mm -hmm. So yes, it's extremely uncomfortable day one, standing out there with a sign that says, ex-veteran, need money, no it place gets, to live. It gets day more two, more that's right, day two, it's not so bad. And a week later, I'm good, and they're called flyers. So they're actually called flyers because they're flying, they're flying the little sign. Mm -hmm. So they, this guy has a flying turn for two hours. He goes to McDonald's, and the other guy comes up, and he flies for two hours. So it's just, it's just crazy. Wow. What and my question sometimes is to them is, what makes you think I've got the money to give you? Well, they don't care. It's numbers. But, yeah. but imagine. So here's the deal: in in sales, in business, in life, as an entrepreneur, we what if we had that kind of motivation, determination, and drive? Sure. I mean, these, these folks are out there doing it every single day. Hell, we can't even get people to make phone calls anymore. It's yeah. ridiculous. Right. Yeah. Most companies, the biggest challenge they have is their salespeople aren't, take absolutely no initiative. Oh, he moved it to India now, right? Well, and but that's not, but no, there's enough, yeah, there's some, but but the reality is there's enough people right here in the United States not doing their job, not living. If you're not making money now in this economy, what the hell's wrong with you, man? Right. Yeah. There's something wrong because you're not working because th there has never been a better economy in the United States. I don't think ever. Right. Than we have right now. Yeah. So, but the reality of that is people still aren't doing the things they need to do. Yeah. Well, you're always going to have that that effect in any society, no matter how bad, good or bad the economy is. You know, right now in Spring Hill, GM just is going through a strike, and there are people that are actually uh, on strike for uh, the GM plant in Spring Hill that are, you know, kind of crying, woe is me. And I'm They're like, on Dude. strike? Yeah. Wow. And that like, used well, to be the Saturn factory. And you know, some people who are speaking against the union are saying, well, you know, the people are coming out who are on strike saying, well, once we get our jobs back, we're going to remember who you are. We know you own businesses. We're not going to patronize your business anymore because we're going to remember what you said about the union and i'm going uh but right now you don't have any income so right. you know why don't we think about that for a second and you know that's the other thing is i always talk about is a lot of people to your credit and what you're saying is uh and i'm, I'm going to try and do some 
Right now, we are some, all some playing hand with our hand I'm, gestures. I'm making sure I'm steepling right <laughs> so now. Actually, so all of us are steepling yeah. right yeah, now. Yeah, so here's the other thing. So you always see politicians with their thumbs, thumbs up. Thumbs up. All Dude, the time. you are in my head since all, we had that conversation. That's right. All the time. So, and you I, know, it, it's always, you see, yeah. like right now, I'm just having yeah. a conversation with you. With your thumbs up. My thumbs up. are up. They're going, oh, man, yeah. this guy's good. This is yeah. good. Right? You'll see me walking down the street and my, my thumbs will be yeah. up now. This is great stuff for me to know as a speaker, you know, because I'm a straight ahead, down the middle motivational keynote guy yeah like let's make these people feel great about themselves in, in one hour and get excited about you know re so, reframing their life yeah so let me share some things with you that's really powerful <clears throat> um on framing so one of the biggest challenges we have is we come out we go hey thank you very much thank you for having me here really thankful to be here happy to work with you guys great to be here tonight sounds desperate yes it is desperate as hell so you're supplicating one of the things that i coach my guys to do and gals to do is eradicate neediness I'm not saying be rude, but I don't thank anybody for time to sit down, right? I mean, hey, we got some time here. Let's, let's get some value out of it. If this is good and there's some synergy, we're going to do it again. That's going to be great, right? Right. But I'm not coming in going, hey, thank you, Rich. Thank you so much for putting me on. Man, you put me in front of your people. Thank you so much. Because yeah. I would look like a derelict, right? I mean, maybe once. Well, maybe once at hey, the hey, end. Bill, thank you for being on the show. Yes, thank oh, you, Bill. you're welcome. You're welcome. My supplicators. <laughs> My supplicators. Good name for a band. The supplicators. Yeah. 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 supplicators. We're going to do some supplication now. Yeah. Yeah. But so, but, but when we're trying to attract someone to do business with them, we typically, and we're trying to get into their office, we do this silly thing where we go, hey, I know you're busy. Thank you so much for giving me some time. Everyone's busy. Everyone, well, yeah, so, but think about what you just said. Hey, I know you're busy. I know you're more valuable, more important than me. Thank you so much for giving your give me your time. I know you're really busy. Right. Mm -hmm. So you've already supplicated. You've already lowered your status. Right. And status is, sta whoever controls status controls a conversation. Yeah. So better to go in and say, hey, I am glad. I know you're busy. I'm busy too. I'm so glad we had time to get together. Let's see if we can't put a deal together. Yeah, let's roll. So much more powerful. Let's do that. Let's do that. Mm. You know, and then status is such an interesting thing because I've, I've studied, been studying acting for four years. It's okay. like a late, you know, mid-life uh, pursuit. And uh, the first thing you always have to consider two people in the scene who is of higher status because that's going to determine how you play the relationship interesting. between the two people. So... Lot goes into it, and yeah, the camera mm -hmm. angles. Sure, camera angles. A yeah. downward camera angle indicates uh, inferiority, lower mm -hmm. status, and an upward camera angle towards you and indicates that you are the character. And in sometimes control. you, and sometimes the actor doesn't even know what that what that is. That's for them to figure out. You have to figure out how to interact with that other people, the other, and make it even if it's just w at being shot on an iPhone. Yeah. Mm. How to make it come to life. Sure. Yeah. Great to know. Yeah. So any of these techniques are phenomenal. You know, yeah. another thing that um, just some body language things I'll just throw out if that's okay. No, give, yeah, give, us, give, give us like how to, by the end of this episode, how can we be more powerful? Okay. Well, I can tell you one thing that I know we've all heard before the Superman pose. It absolutely works. So the Superman pose where Superman stands, his, his hands are on his hip, he's standing upright, he's tall, he's, strength, he's strong. Military, um, basic training. It is kind of that. Yeah. <clears throat> sure. So what that does is that releases endorphins throughout your entire body. And, oh. you know, everybody I do, Tony Robbins does, every, you probably do. We all have rituals. And these are rituals we do before we, ha before we go out on stage and perform, right? We get ourselves into a, a, a very powerful yeah, state. He, he jumps up and down. He jumps up, well, he does, he does about uh, eight minutes before he even comes out on stage. Breaks a light sweat. Oh, geez, this guy's incredible. Yeah. So, but we all do that. So, you know, when you, when you can identify that, you can put yourself in whatever state you want to put yourself in. When you can identify how, to, how you're doing that. So Superman pose, that's exactly what that's doing. That's a state change. So if you want to change your, your physiology, if you want to change your emotion, change your physiology, it'll absolutely follow suit. So that's good. Standing upright is good. Um, obviously, uh, great eye contact, not weird eye contact. Yeah. You know, if you've seen that person. How's, how's my eye contact? Yeah, eye contact is it too intense? Yeah, it's good. No, it's all right. Because it's I'll keep it to yeah. let the person know I am here. I am with you. Right. We are in this together. Yeah. And occasionally... You have to blink. You do. And you look away. And you can look away. And you want to look away. Right. If, because especially, um, dep if, if you're perceived, <laughs> that's scary. <laughs> Very scary, Jim. <laughs> oh, Jimbo. Jim is an axe murderer. I, I, just totally, yeah. I, I just did pattern interruption just now. That is a pattern interruption. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I use them all the time. Um, so, it, but if you if you hold the stare too long, it becomes kind of weird, right? Yeah. So you just it's just normal. Just be, be normal and yeah. add some add some uh, new skills. 
right? You know, I mean, just how, how you present yourself, the language you use, how you use your hands, how you breathe, tonality, voice, all of that's very important. Yeah. See, is it weird? There's a guy I know that just like his stare drills into you and you feel like the hole's coming out of the back of your head. Yeah, like, that's too know. intense. Is that's that way too intense? intense. Yeah. Well, he's, it's like, dude, you gotta, you gotta break away. Yeah. yeah there's some, and also, I, I hate to keep bringing this up, but it's just perfect similarities. These are great techniques for the, the things that I do with my life, which is education, speaking absolutely and 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 acting so it's like you know there's some powerful actors that increase intensity in the scene by never blinking Mm -hmm. but but they're going but they're after a they're after a very specific experience for the audience right so they're creating that but we do that in business or just a normal a normal relationship will scare people to death sure it's kind of funny whenever i i get not in a confrontational situation with some of my other business partners, I will ask a, and I'll tell them, I'm going to ask you a very direct question and I want you to answer uh, spontaneously. Well, you set it up. Yeah. So I ask them directly and then I wait because they're thinking about how they're going to respond. And I go, you are telling me right now what the answer is. Your hesitation is saying everything. Ooh. Okay. But is it? Yeah. It could be. But I know not, exactly not a, what he, yeah, yeah, but, not, but again, if you have to set that baseline, because they could be left brain analytical, they could be very left brain analytical, and they're thinking because they, they're, it's very valuable to them that they have a very clear thought. Mm-hmm. Where I'm very right brain, where I think most of us here are, are right brain, <clears throat> so we're going to just go. We'll just go. So give me something, you know, spontaneous. Well, here's what I think. Yeah. Right. Where so a left brain person, an engineer, that type, left brain, they're going to go. Accountant, lawyer. Yeah, absolutely. It's take and more see, time. and I deal with these folks all these the are time. Typi- these are typically very, um, uh, could the question I pose is a yes or no type of question. Okay, you know, and maybe I, and different. What, yeah, and it's literally like, you know, okay, uh, in this particular well, situation. Well, let me ask you, do you want to be in this car? Yes. Well, not only that, just, just being the- do you, do you feel like you can make the payment every This day? is a question of, like, okay, so what you're telling me is, and I'm going to ask you this directly, uh, are you wanting them to be out of the organization? And typically, that was the kind, was kind of a question, a conversation. So voting off the island, but see, yeah. but okay, but I could understand the silence on that because there, there's a lot of there, there's some damage to be done if you yeah. want somebody out of an organization. I'm going to think that I, even right brain as I am, I'm going to go. Is it worth it? Is it worth it? Is it worth yeah. it? You know what? Um, but the thing I, is, I that answers the question. Well, it answers the question that they're at a dilemma. Yeah, it doesn't necessarily answer the question. They thought it through. See, we got to be very careful because see, we we want to judge people how they respond based on how we respond. Yeah. But here's reality: so people are either internally driven, externally driven, one or the other. They're either visual, auditorial, or kinesthetic. Yeah, you Fact. have to you have to find out what a person is so that then you know you know how how to how to relate with them, but how to accept the responses. They can't have all three. They're always gonna well. Be- you're going to have a dominant. You can have a dominant. So, so, what, so what am I? You're your visual auditorial. I'd say very visual auditorial. But you did say that you you have a big heart, so you could be kinesthetic. Well, well, kinesthetic is feel. Kinesthetic is feel, yeah. touch, emotion. emotion. Yeah, yeah. So when people say, okay, so kinesthetic, uh, you hear people that talk like this. Uh, man, this just feels right. Yeah. Doesn't this feel good? Yeah. So, I mean, I'm like picking up this vibe, and this vibe is amazing. In the car business, it was, I want to see the new GLS. So they're visual. Visual. Mm-hmm. Yep. If they came in and say, tell me about the new GLS, they're auditory. Okay. Well, when you yeah. got me into the car, the last car that, that I leased for three years, we went to every dealership in town. As soon as I sat in that car, I was like, here he is. This is it. That was yeah. a feel. It felt okay. right. Okay, so now, so here's something else, NLP. How many times do uh, does a person have to look at something to make a buy decision? Mm. Because there's 1C, 2C, 3C. Typically, not many more than 3C, but there are. So, interesting. I like your jacket, man. How, how long have you had that? Oh, about a year. Have you really? Yeah. Do you have a lot of jackets like that? The black? A lot of black. Yeah, I bet. bet. Did you have to look at a lot of jackets to find that one? No, as soon as I saw it, I was like, you got to have Boom, it. Boom, love it, man. So 1C, right? I'm identifying some some patterns here. The, the Your car, man, I love your car. Thanks. Is that typically the kind of car you, you drive? At post-divorce, yeah. Post-divorce. <laughs> <laughs> that might that might have been that other button. That was pattern interrupt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, post divorce will do that to you. Yeah. So you're just trying to you're just trying to gauge and find out yeah. elicit information. This is what we do all the time. That's what I teach my guys to do during when you're in negotiations. You've got to extract all the information you can. When you're trying to make the right hire, you've got to extract that information. When you're looking to bring somebody in as an executive or a salesperson, and you're going to give them a lot of access to your company and the things that are critically important to you and your family. 
you got to know them. You yeah. have to, you have to really understand their language because here's here's reality. If you understand how, if I understand how you receive language, mm-hmm. then I can I can give you that language. So we, um, you said um, somebody comes and they go, "Hey, uh, I want to see this this car." Right. So uh, that tells me that the probably their dominant language is visual. Mm. So I'm going to say, "Have you looked at Have you looked at this car already? See what did I just use? Looked yeah. visual. Yeah, because there's there's a video." That's, that shows this car and it is amazing. Now I'm creating some imagery, but I'm still using video. So it really sounds like this is the car you want. And they're going, what? What? Because they're visual yeah. and we're talking sound. So we can we can mix pair and and lose lose the relationship, lose rapport. Yeah. So very, very cool now stuff. Now what about the, uh, this is the ultimate um, thing that people complain about a lot and there's so many variations on this theme and it's confusing now because there's so many ways for people to greet each other now but the handshake and the quality of the handshake the strength of the handshake i think that's something we all want to learn about or the well fist bump. I, or the fist bump well no because as you know it's like you can do the swipe in and i can pull it into my chest so, okay so let's talk, all right hug. let's let's talk about this okay because we see this all the time especially in politics mm-hmm. politicians yeah um and i, I tell you uh Donald Trump's the best I've ever seen. Bush did it. Everybody does it. With but the handshake. That's a handshake show. Here's a handshake. Good handshake. Pull you in. Ah. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm exerting dominance over you. Here's another thing they do. When they're done with the handshake, right? The pat on the shoulder. And what good, about, what good, about good this? Good job, boy. Oh, yeah. Same thing. Good good job, boy. Good job, son. Yeah. Good job. Looking forward we'll be, to that. You'll that's be watching me soon. It's, so it's, it's an act of dominance. It's just yeah. basically state. And another thing in politics. Well, if people know that and they pick up on that, is that offensive to some people? He just made me a bitch. Well, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, yeah. So here's what you had. He's Robin. Yeah. Here's what you had. Uh, Ara- Arafat and, um, oh, my God. Who, who was this? They, Aristotle? They were, good. Ar- no, they were, um, uh, they were fighting to get in the door. Oh. In, in, uh, oh, the Arafat. I'm thinking yeah, yeah. Socrates and Aristotle. Yeah. No, no, no. They were fighting to get in the door because whoever goes in the door last has dominance. And they're fighting to get it. One, pushing one in. He's turning around. And uh, uh, Bill Clinton was there. And he's like, oh, my God. I mean, it's, it's so funny. And uh, in body language, you this is one of the things that you watch. You know, and another. So it's all about dominance. And there, you will always see um, the most dominant person sitting on the left side and ex- extending the hand because they've got the upper hand. Mm. They always want that in all the photo ops. They want to have the upper hand. That's where that comes from. Oh, wow. Isn't that powerful? Mm. On the left-hand side. Left-hand side, like stage left or? Stage left, sitting left, anywhere. Anywhere right. you see. Because they want the camera. When the camera shoots them, they want to have their close. hand oh. over top of the less dominant hand. Wow. Mm. So it's all little things. Same thing, you know, they're walking the door, pat, pat. You know, good job, boy. Good job. Yeah. yeah. So. Now what uh, you know? So I'm a I'm an old, still an old school gentleman where I want to open a a, a door for I do a all the female. Time. I, I do. Now what about a fellow? Yeah, male? I, you know I don't I don't I don't think that's so. There's um there's, so, so there's a male and female walking through the front door at Starbucks, mm-hmm. right? I see them coming. Mm-hmm. I open the door. Yeah, but you open it for the woman, but out of courtesy, you hold it for the man. Right. Doesn't doesn't degrade you at all. As a matter of fact, it, it, I think it increases your value. Even though some women today do not want to have doors open. You know, for I've them. yet to have a woman. I know yeah. we hear this stuff. I, I don't know. I haven't met these women yet. I open no. the door for somebody. They think thank you, or they don't say anything at all. And when yeah. they don't say anything at all, I go, "You're welcome." Yeah, because yeah. I'm a jerk. <laughs> yeah, well, you, but you're not. Do you, the, the do, do you want the last word? I, yeah. Yeah. See, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> you're still my bitch. <laughs> it was so funny. Uh, Rich got so upset with me a couple of shows ago with uh, our, our friend who designs clothing. Um, oh, Aaron McGill. Aaron McGill. Yeah. Uh, remembering names is also a good thing. But the um, I, it was so funny. I said, you know, sometimes I, I do the dead fish handshake and I do the look around the you know to see who's better to talk to. <laughs> no, that, you don't. That, in itself is a posture because it tells them that you're not important enough for me yet. But I think no matter you're what, I'm that. never going to give someone a wet fish. No, I'm, and I'm never going to look somebody, I'm never going to look away. I mean, I, I know what you're saying. He was going for the joke. Yeah, yeah. he was going for the joke. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. That would, that I, would be I don't bad. do that. We're, yeah, we're going we're gonna to do business a handshake one time. I can we're tell trying. you that. Yeah. yeah. yeah but, you know, it's like, I'm just going to look around you. Yeah. And, okay, well, but we have okay, a, I guess but we know we know somebody that does that every time he's they're with somebody. I mean, we all do. We know people and they're they're talking to somebody and their eyes are over here. They're looking at the next opportunity they have all the time. Yeah. We know someone very uh, very well that does yeah. that. Mm. Now, let me ask you this. Okay, so we've talked about body posture. We've talked about eye contact mm-hmm. and we've talked about handshake. Mm-hmm. What else? 
Uh, there's language. There's words. There's there's uh, there's just your tonality. Uh, it's your your enthusiasm. It, it's everything that. It, so we're an entire package. Right. See, I just did this weird entire package, and I made my frame. I made everything bigger. Larger than life. Yeah, I didn't do it for any reason other than that's how I explain the world. But but what it did was make it bigger. Right. So everything we do, everything we do is about status, creating status. Whoever has the highest status controls the conversation, always. That's always the case. Well, it's like it's interesting when you I I'm not faced by celebrities anymore because I've been around so many music celebrities and then as a result I'll I'll, I'll there's athletes that come backstage sure. because every athlete wants to be a musician and every musician wants to be an actor and it's just so crazy. Yeah. So so we fangirl around each other and I just always tell myself every celebrity does two things. They poop and they pay taxes, yeah, and that yeah. just levels the conversation. It just grounds it for me. And and it's funny. The other night, uh, we went out to uh, talk to a client, you and I. Oh yeah. And uh, lo and behold, who walks up and yeah, next table is Mr. Luke Bryan, who has in the in the music world has a higher status than me. But at the same time, I consider myself an artiste. He expresses himself in an artistic manner, and I express myself in an artistic manner. Oh yeah, because yeah. there's a, I think there's a mutual respect. See, yeah, they, yeah there is, and and see, he's he's not threatened by you. Right, you're not threatened by him. It's comfortable. Yes, yeah. right. But if you were in negotiations, you would be posturing for a higher status. But the funny thing is about him that it signaled to the people in the restaurant and to me and the people at the table that were in company with you that he was big enough to come and be, I guess, the lesser statured person at that particular moment. But you know? it, but no, he see, but he's not. You see, don't think so? because no, because I no. he was still standing and I was sitting. Understanding, but he. He came to you. He came to you. But there's right. nothing wrong with that because yeah. he didn't lose anything in that. Right. Had he come over and given you a wet, a wet, you know, really? a silly conversation, right? You know, I, I don't know what I'm doing uh, different, but he didn't. He came over. He presented himself well. He was very I nice to him. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Man, right. very, so that's that status. See, I do that. I think people do that all the time. Sure. And there's nothing wrong with that. It, as a matter of fact, it takes more initiative. It takes more uh, internal um fortitude to get up and walk over to somebody else and say hey how you doing haven't seen you in a while how are things going yeah right and that just and that, so does he more elevated in your guys's eyes right now well, by I coming over something to me yeah. that you know uh what, he, he what he a was, great guy yeah, yeah absolutely nice guy. he absolutely. didn't have to do that right that's, what, that's what everyone is going to say from that scenario that's exactly right yeah. and how many other people saw that the whole restaurant sure they did yeah, yeah. but so, i think it's it signaled to me that he's just a Decent human being. Exactly. Decent human being. Yeah. Absolutely. We yeah. all we all poop and pay taxes. Yep. Now, if you get into if you get into negotiations, it's probably going to be much different. You'll see a different side of him, I would imagine. Sure. If you know, I mean, you would see. Well, a that's the thing side. about uh, one of, one of the topics I discuss for creatives is create you know selling for creatives, which I would imagine you'd be able to dissect and you know chop up because we're all in Tuesday. sales. Uh, well, because I tell I tell my students that want to yeah. be that want to make a living in their creativity. That, Look, no one is going to buy into your creativity and how hire you to do your craft until they buy into you as a human being mm -hmm. know you like you trust you are you likable do you do people want to be around you and so we drive that home and i do these camps and and jim stops by and talks to the kids about sales yeah so, about the stuff you're talking about yeah, you know? yeah so you know one of the big it doesn't matter and i've said this for years now but it doesn't matter um who it is i coach it doesn't matter we all we all start at the same place mm -hmm. mindset it's that mindset. Is that is that person who who's attempting to get buy in? Do they believe? Right. So I, I have this process. It's called ownership. I think when you're in absolute control of your destiny, you know what you're going to do, and you're willing to pay the price to do it. Nothing's going to stand in your way. You're in ownership. But that takes that takes work to get there. Right. Most people just have an idea, a goal. Maybe they maybe they have a light strategy or no strategy. And they they end up in a very mediocre place. Mm. It's only when you when you decide I'm going to own this, it's going to rise and fall on me and my actions. Yes, that you really can excel. I love it. I tell I tell you know I kind of outline my journey a little bit in my book, and I, I tell everyone like, look at I fell in love with rejection, and there was doors slammed in my face and roadblocks, and as long as you have that laser focus and you follow through and you do not quit. <laughs> You're gonna be all right. You're gonna be it right. was a pretty. Rel it was still a relatively vague plan, but I think one of the most important aspects of the story was I wasn't gonna quit. Mm -hmm. No one was going to derail me from the goal of hearing myself on the radio. Yeah, you know. So 
I don't know, Jim. That was the same thing for me. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. You wanted to hear yourself on the radio. Oh, yeah. I wanted yeah. a career in radio. And that first day I got on the air, I had somebody very that very day tell me, oh, you'll never get on the air. It was, it was so, it was such a nice thing to come back the next day after I was on the air. That very previous day, he, he, was, a, he was a guy who uh, was part of the traffic like the d- division at uh, the place where I worked, which was an electrical um, contractor. And <clears throat> I was with oh, him. Oh, he wasn't in radio. He no, just no, said, no, you'll no. never get on the radio. He was in a separate business, he, gotcha. and he gave up on his dream of being a professional baseball player because he, tore, he injured his, his arm. And the uh, doctor told him he'd never play again. So he had to find something else to do, which is not as glamorous <clears throat> as what he wanted. Well, he was do. carrying that resentment around with him. Right. Yeah. But the, the salt in his wound was the fact that his arm came back better than ever. But he was, a, he was too late. Interesting. <sighs> so there's a, there's a process called a loser's lump. Mm-hmm. We've all seen it. The sprinters are running, and he's getting outran. All of a sudden, he pulls a hammy, right? Mm-hmm. It could, it could be the very same thing. But we see this, and, and then what we have a tendency to want to do is to de- detract or destroy your dream. Because I didn't live mine. I don't right. want you to live yours. Yep. You can't do it. It's going to be too hard. I'm going to be a so, negative eight. That's exactly right. But that can be the very thing that fires you up so much you go, I'll show you. Yeah. yeah. And I'll that's a motivational you. technique. It can be. Well, yeah. and if you read the comments section of any of your own YouTube videos, um, you got to be careful because sometimes I get these guys that are always poking. They're poking the bear. They're just like, oh, God, I don't like you, Rich Redmond. And, and I want to respond and be like, oh, I haven't heard of you. I've never heard of you. What are you doing with your life? And Jim is like, take yeah, the no, high road, man. buddy. Well, not yeah. only that, yeah. treat it like a complaint and yep. try and win him over to your side. Sure. That's that's challenge yourself. That's that's something. That's one thing Cardone talks about. Is like, look, yeah, I get, I have haters. Give me a chance. Mm-hmm. I'll win you over. Mm-hmm. But it, but Cardone won't take the time to respond to anybody. Right and, nor should you. Nor should any of us. Sure. Look, they're gonna they're gonna follow us. They're gonna they're gonna want to challenge everything that we say, do, and believe. And most of the time, they're not doing anything with their own lives anyway. That's yeah. that's their frustration Just for them. Miserable human beings. I'm bad at supplicating, big well, time. You are. Yeah. We'll change it. Interesting. Well, you know, I'm trying to get. Uh, I've been chasing the, uh, the the people at Cardone's place to do their audio production because I think I could do a better bo- uh, job at processing. But you've done some podcast. great stuff for them. Oh, I have. Yeah. But it's more of a, a hey, I want to be your guy. I want to do this for you. You know, let me in, let me in, let me in. And I basically uh, had this conversation a couple of weeks ago with uh, Johnny the camera guy, who I've been in loose contact with. Great guy. Was that the guy that filmed us when we did? Yeah. It? Okay. Real nice kid, right? Yeah. Yeah. Remember him? And he, um, we we talk every now. Now and then, and, and I say, I said, look, I know what I can bring to the table for you, okay? And I know I, I'm not saying anything about what you're doing from the audio perspective. I know I can raise the bar, mm-hmm. all right? And he, Cardone, being the brand that he is, needs to sound the next level, yeah. You know, because I would imagine a lot of the people are actually listening to his stuff rather than watching it. Mm-hmm. I'm sure there's a lot of people watching it. But, yeah, you know. I listen more than I watch. Right, I don't have time to really yeah. watch and drive. Hey, you don't have time for lunch. You're not going to have time to pull up a, a, a you know the your lunch laptop. thing is interesting because it's actually contrary to what Cardone talks. That's about. That's actually a really great title for a book as well. Yeah, you know, because I I read a book by Ferrazzi called. Um, <clears throat> Uh, never eat alone, which yeah. is the idea that you should always be mixing business and pleasure, and be showed and be out in public, being seen that way. Mm-hmm. But also, when you're when you're enjoying lunch with someone else, there's always some sort of something you could be creating business opportunities with like minded people. Okay, you know, we're conjuring ideas. So, yes, yeah. but that's that's different. I'm talking about I'm talking about people who waste time. Mm-hmm. Now, if you're using, if you're now, I don't do lunch meetings. I don't. I don't do them. I don't yeah. think it works. But if that's how you create your business and you're good at that, yeah, work the hell out of it. But most people aren't. Right. Most, most pe- people don't see the. They don't. They don't see the mini op, the mini commitments <clears throat> that need to happen in those scenarios. Sure. Yeah. You got. You got to figure out what's my objective. What's the commitment I'm going to go for in this scenario? Like the other night when we met. With uh, with Angie, yes. One of the things that I wanted, my objective was to get okay. So the next thing we're going to do is give you a proposal, right? Yep. Okay. So you're interested enough to move forward on this thing. We know exactly where we need to be and land, and I can posture myself into getting a transaction going. So Bill, as a coach, like, what's the best way for people to find you and you know, learn about your services? Yeah, so they can reach me at uh, bluesuitcoaching.com. You can get me there. You can get me at bill at bluesuitcoaching.com. So I actually am CEO and and uh, part owner of a, a company, um, uh, Blue Dress Internet Marketing Strategies. And actually, I just I was just got engaged a day yeah, ago. Yeah, I was about to say, oh, congrats. Nice. congrats. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So is, it the, is this the thing, a blue, the blue? 
Is that what uh, I- no, I just look better in blue than yellow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's uh, no, it's just uh, uh, it, it's just cool. I, I kind of like it. So I've always I've always had my own CoachBillMaddox.com and did did that. But uh, we we've, we've tied the two companies together, and honestly, it's phenomenal because we can. With on Ingrid's side, my fiance side, she can produce all of the websites. I mean, incredible. She's a web we're doing, doing, yeah, we're doing stuff for the military right now. Great. I mean, it's incredible. Um, and what she can, we do uh, landing pages and and have a lead generation system. And- yeah, all of that. And then I can come in with the coaching and, and the guys that coach for for me, and I can help them get better conversions. I can help them close the deal, create the right funnels, right. and so it, it really worked out. And in addition to that, all these techniques. You, you're putting them to use in a way with another business. Are you still doing real estate? Is that right? so? Yeah, I'm still I'm still buying real estate. I just I just uh, flipped a house. Uh, what did you tell me? 144 how, homes you owned at one point, or yeah, 144 properties. Wow, um, laundromats, wash and dryer facilities. Oh, uh, so storage. commercial real estate. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow, ten thousand square foot buildings. Yeah, I mean they were it's pretty phenomenal. You business. can't you can't lose with storage facilities and car washes, right? Um, yeah, laundry facilities are great. I love they paid for my Harleys. Um, um, and yeah. uh, Harley's quarters, 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 yeah. quarters, 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 yeah. And then you always have a vending machine and, yeah. and video games, right? Yeah. yeah, no video games, no video games. No, but I did buy a 10,000 square foot building one time that came that was an old um, uh, parlor, I guess, and it had all these old video games and like Pac Man, Galaga. And, oh my god, it was so cool. You yeah. know, I hadn't seen these games for 20 years. One right. thing you don't know about Bill is that at one time his last name was Maddoxini. Maddox scene. He was in the uh, refuse business. Yeah. You, know yeah. you play Pac Man, I break right. your legs. You go, yeah. you go keep playing the game. Yeah. yeah. So that's 144. Probably, you have to have some help managing all that. Obviously. Yeah. So I had, a, I had a great team. Uh, I had guys that worked for me. So it, the reality is, when I started, I knew nothing about real estate at all. Right. Nothing. I read a book called Building Wealth by Russ Whitney. That was my introduction. I read that book. I didn't have. I didn't even have the money to buy the book. I sat in a bookstore in Springfield, Ohio, in wow. a mall, and I read this book. And the lady kept coming back, going, "Are you going to buy the book?" I'm like, "Yeah." So I called my practice wife and I said, "Hey, do we? Can I use <laughs> first the, wife? Yeah. Can I use the? Can I use the credit card? Because we had worked to pay off, pay everything off, so she could come home. We just had our first child, and uh, she's like, "Yeah." So I took that book home. I read that. I'm like. Next morning she got up, I hadn't been to, been to bed yet. And I had this strategy, this huge strategy, how I was gonna become a real estate investor. And I said, Diana, I'm gonna be a real estate investor. She's like, okay. I did 17 houses my first year. Yeah. I had no credit. I had no credit. I had no money. I, he, I, I just, I found a lady. He took, you know, I took a strategy out of the book. He said, find somebody that's that will for sale by owner. I did, I found a lady, she believed in me. I flipped this house, that first house that uh, we flipped. Um, I think I made about forty six thousand dollars on. I said, "Man, I'm doing this forever." Mm-hmm. So then, one after another. But you get to the place when you've done a few yourself that you can start bringing people in. I start subbing everything out, and then I got to the place where I had eleven guys that work for me every day. Wow! Yeah. And then did um, did you lose some of those properties in the divorce? How did that work? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's another story. Oh yeah, yeah that's yeah, another yeah. podcast. I, like I, sur- I survived two marriages, so. Yeah, I'm still on my first. That's good. And Do not get only. rid of Courtney. No, no, I mean, she's good. She's good. Good. Good people, and uh, we're doing uh, anniversary number nineteen. This, fantastic. This weekend, my parents so. are celebrating this weekend fifty one years yeah. of marriage. I love it. Yeah, I love it. It's yeah. incredible. <clears throat> so they make me just feel like, wow, I can't get this together. <laughs> but they did it. My mom was just like. You pick one and you make the. You commitment. make it work, man. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, it's, yeah. it's so much tougher now, though. It is, man. I mean, there's it's just tough, and you know, so uh, part of like you know, so I was married 25 years, and uh, part of that that challenge is when you're growing businesses, when you're building. Sometimes you can forget about your spouse. Right. Yeah. Sometimes you can you can give too much attention to your businesses and and maybe not not take care of the things you need to take care of. So as you know, this is one of the things. So I try to help people that I coach avoid those pitfalls. Yes. Right. So they don't have to dig out of them. We try to go around them. And I've seen some of these things I've lived through. I've had, I had seven companies, man. I bankrupted two. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, I've had some very successful companies and building another successful company. It's great. But it's because it's because you just continue. You learn. And I learned more in the struggles and the challenges um, than I've ever learned in the successes. I think most people would say that. Your failures define what you oh, do. Oh, they really do. It's part of your DNA. It is. Totally. It is. And yeah. it's and it, and because and to those listening out there, that's what makes Bill a a bona fide coach is that he's got the equity. He's got the scars. He's, he's got, done it. Yeah, he's got the broken bones that came along with doing business. So so be 
you know, when you're searching a coach, if that's what you're looking for, make sure you do the research that they've got the battle wounds. I don't want yeah, to study with a know. drummer that hasn't gone out and toured with a successful band. I right. don't want to have a personal trainer that doesn't look immaculate. I it's get just, it. you please walk the walk. If I'm yep. going to pay you for yep. your time and talent, I want it to be proven strategies and that you've walked down that same path that I'm trying to get to. Yeah, exactly. Yep. You know? Exactly. You know what's really interesting is we talk about things being difficult and more difficult than ever. Is I, I was watching on, uh, on of all things, Facebook last night. There was like some photographer, he did this um, photo shoot and he captured all these people interacting in these perfect scenarios in life like lovers with their backs turned to each other and they have their cell phone in their hands oh, wow. or mm. to or a family at the dinner table and everyone's on their devices and what he did is he said okay stop and he went and he removed the device he said keep your hand in that position he took the devices away and he took the a black and white photo of them in that same position, like holding nothing, and it looks ridiculous, but it sees, you can see the potential for the human interact and, and the interaction and the relationship building that could be happening at that moment, but it's not. Right. Mm -hmm. It's creepy. You know, it is creepy, and we've never been more connected as a, as a society, as, a, as hum, in humanity, as we are today, and we've never been less connected. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah it's, um, and I'm, I think we're all guilty. We all of are. We all yeah. are. Yep. Yeah. You know, especially I'm riding a tour bus, you know, I'm around some of my best friends and I've been doing it for like, you know, 20, 24 years, if not longer. And, you know, back in the day, you'd watch, uh, you know, Richard Pryor on the video and you would drink massive amounts of coffee and play board games, park plays, you know, wow. nowadays we're on our devices. <clears throat> sure. We're watching Netflix. And so you're saying that even though there was a television, you still had camaraderie, a community interaction. You're all watching the same thing. Now there's seven guys all watching different Something things. Something different. Yeah. Yeah, I could see that. Very interesting. Because, I mean, I, I could make the argument that even back in the day, the family got in the same room, turned the TV on, and everyone was entertained by a box. Yes. You know, and that's... It, that's been our society for a while. Yeah. But it's never been to the it's never been to the level that it is today. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're so isolated individually. Take the phones away. Kids have no idea. Adults have no idea what to do. They yeah. have no idea what to do with their time. I, 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 I try to monitor that for myself. And it's funny because Courtney came across a meme the other day uh, I'll never notice how much you're on the phone until I put my own down and start criticizing you for being on yours. <laughs> that's good. Yeah, something along the lines. Yeah, of, that's good. I'm probably butchering it, but yeah. you get the point. Yeah, you know, and it was pretty funny because that's yeah. exactly. You get all put, put my phone down and look at her and be like, "What's on your phone? What are you doing?" What are I'll you tell you what. At, you this know? is this has been fascinating. I'm telling and you, I, and I think it's something that I really want to um, spend time. Uh, at you the should very, be at your drummer's weekend. At the very least. I want to uh, buy some more books on this subject and do some more research because I think it can make us you know, more effective and more powerful and mm -hmm. achieve more goals quicker. What'd you learn today, Jim? Uh, you know, with Bill, there's always something new to learn and I've always just been more aware of my, uh, my slack uh, uh, posture every time I'm around Bill because I'm always just very relaxed. Yeah. yeah, but that's my baseline. You see, that's your baseline, yeah. and that's okay. If you can play yeah. from strength from your baseline, then play mm -hmm. from strength. But when you're meeting new people, it's not always possible. Mm. No, you gotta yeah. you gotta have your you shoulders don't. back, your back up straight, and that's what I do when I'm I'm not I'm not sitting there. You know, I'm yeah. I'm comfortable with you when I'm pretty slack. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, you know, I, I learned I learned that you know you you want to have this you want to be aware of these things and maybe work on these things. But when you're interacting with another human being, I, I don't want to be thinking about these things. You well, know, what it I becomes. Mean? So second nature. Yeah. It becomes so second nature that I just I pick up things all the time, and, yeah. and maybe and they mean something, maybe they don't. Mm -hmm. But it's that it's that ability. See, like I feel like we we've connected, yeah. right? It, and did did we really connect, or did I create the connection? I think we, we I think we both had the hand in it, right? We did, right? But see, how what if you could do that instantly? What if you could? <laughs> it worked. It happened. Yeah. yeah. But what if you could do that instantly? It's faster. Look, 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 how much, look how much quicker you could build and establish your poor. Right. And what if we to, can do it? Get to business. Magically. <laughs> You're just having too much fun with your buttons. <laughs> Aren't I always? Yeah. But you know what? My thing is, is that I'm I'm like 99% of the time highly enthusiastic and an outgoing mm -hmm. extrovert of a person. Yeah. I think as a general rule, I don't know, but it's it, is that an asset in life? Because I, there's very successful introverts. I think, oh, well, the, but the difference is it's it's that direction, it's that ownership, it's that drive, that determination. You can be an extrovert, you can be an introvert, it doesn't matter. Right. If you have that drive and that determination, nothing's going to get in your way and you have a strategy, 
You'll be successful. Strategy is everything. It really is. Mm-hmm. And that's that's where most people do not spend the time to create the right strategy. Yeah. They, they have a goal. They create a goal. That's what I want. But what's the strategy you're going to use? Well, I'm going to do this, but you haven't thought about the strategy. Yeah. Is it really a good strategy? Has anybody ever used this strategy and been successful? Because if it has, let's see if we can apply it to your business. And if it, if it hasn't, does it make sense? Yeah. Maybe it doesn't make sense. Yeah. So strategy is critically important. And I think a coach thing is really like, you know, for a while I was like, man, I've, I've got, you know, I got life by the balls. I'm doing well here. I achieved a lot of my dreams. Do I need a coach? Some of the greatest athletes in the world still have a coach because so I can get that third party perspective. Sure. I just took an acting class with Nicole Kidman's coach that she has had on set for the last 20 years. Yeah. A lot of my favorite drummer friends are still studying with guys that can give them an outside perspective. So I'm going to, I've turned a new qu- Page. I'm like having coaches for different aspects of my life. I think it's a good thing, and it's usually worth every penny. And I and I tell you, the online thing is, I think, going to be huge for you. It having, is going to be huge. Having an online. I mean, I have an online course, but something like, like this that no matter what country you live in, what line of work you in, what language barrier, cultural barriers, people need to know about body language. They do. Yeah, they do. And, and it needs a voiceover guy. And yeah. they need a voiceover guy. And you're guy. always going to get the job. That's right. Well, this has been amazing fun. One more time where people yeah. can find you, Bill. Yeah, you can get me at uh, blue, blue, well, you can get me at uh, bluesuitcoaching.com. You can, if you need the internet service or something like that, you can get us at bluedress.com. Uh, and you can get me at uh, bill at bluesuit.com. I love it. Nice. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you so much for being Absolutely, here, Absolutely, man. man. It's been a pleasure. It's been really, fun. really appreciate it. Yeah, it's been fun. Right. Jim. Yeah. A lot of good stuff, huh? That was a, it was a great episode. That was an action-packed episode. If you're a creative, I mean, this is this is good stuff for creatives, yeah. man. Yeah, because a lot of creatives are horrendous business people because mm-hmm. they spend all their time in their creativity. Well, it's just right side brain, man. Yeah. It's just yeah. right side. If you can mix the two. Yeah. You, know, I you think have if, to. You're I a think, business. Uh, if you're going to survive and thrive, for but, sure. But I mean, what are some of the big faux pas that people do? That are lower Broadway, you know, you meet somebody who's coming to town. What are the most they common don't, They mistakes? don't treat themselves like a product. They don't have relevant marketing materials. They don't get out on their nights off. Mm-hmm. They don't have a business card. They don't have a website. And they don't know. Well, they don't have a business. They don't have these body language techniques down. Well, they don't have that too, but they don't have a business. They They have, have, it's, they don't have ownership. Mm -hmm. Man, when you get ownership, you will do those things. Sure. It's, that's, I I feel like sometimes I spend so much money investing and keeping my businesses and my promotional materials high quality and relevant and, and current. Mm. It's, it's just part of doing business. I mean, look at this sign. Hello. Thank you, Jim McCarthy. (laughs) Best $2,000 I've ever spent. (laughs) (laughs) Guys, our ask of you is to please subscribe to the show, share with your friends. If you're on Apple podcast, it's a great way to leave a review. When you leave a review, it takes one minute and it allows people to find the podcast faster and it ranks us higher. So share, subscribe, rate and review. You can watch Watch us on YouTube. Keep coming back for the good stuff. We really appreciate it. We'll see you next time. This has been The Rich Redmond Show. Subscribe, rate, and follow along at richredmond.com forward slash podcasts.